Welcome to Feature Franchi TV, bringing the truth to you. Thank you, my viewers. Thank you, my subscribers. And thank you for those that are here to subscribe. And I say subscribe so that we keep you updated about what is happening in the country and in the world at large. Thank you. The headline news. Federal government slash down I visa fee on U.S. citizen. Renouncing violence and bloodletting should be our language, said Fanny Kayode. Parts of five states in eastern region of Nigeria ban Eda's moves, AK-47 rifle and deadly weapon. Edwin Clark pronounced region turn to be president. Fichi Franchi TV News in details. Nigerian federal government has finally reduced visa fee for U.S. citizens on August 29, 2019 as at around 4.39 a.m. as a result of U.S. imposed new visa fees on Nigerian. Disclosing this on Wednesday, Honorable Minister of Interior Ogbeni Rahuf Aregbeshola said that the attention was drawn due to the introduction of reciprocity fee for all approved applications for non-immigrant visas in B, F, H, 1, B, I, L and R visa classifications. In view of that, the ministry acknowledges that there were engagement with the United States Embassy on the issue and in the aftermath, a committee was set up to conduct due diligence in line with the ministry extant policy on reciprocity of visa fees. The statement read, the committee had concluded his assignment and submitted a report, but the issuance of authorization for his recommendations was delayed due to transition processes in the ministry at the policy level. Monetary policy rate caught a positive move Analyst, the Honorable Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Rahuf Aregbeshola, has approved the decrease of visa charges payable by U.S. citizens in line with reciprocity policy as been recommended by the committee. Accordingly, the Comptroller General of Nigerian Immigration Services, NIS, Muhammad Bamba Dede, as directed to infect the decrease in Nigerian visa fee charges to U.S. citizens with infect from Thursday, 29th August 2019. Wow, this is a good move. So <laughs> many Nigerians are already, uh, have, they've actually been complaining about the reciprocity fee. Uh, some are even seeing the normal old field as something very high, but uh, with the move that, 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 that the federal government has made, I, I think <laughs> it is actually a good move. The former aviation minister, Fanny Kayode, attacked a Second Republic House of Representatives member, Junad Muhammad over his comments, which was made in reaction to IPOF moves to attack and arrest President Muhammad Buhari in Japan, saying that Biafran agitations would pay with their blood should they attempt an attack on Nigerian president. Responding to Fanny Kayode's tweet on his handle on Wednesday, Fanny Kayode asked Muhammad to withdraw the comment saying that any attempt to share the blood of any Sadhana for any reason as a consequence of any plot or grand northern design will have catastrophic consequences. He wrote, I have always had immense respect for Muhammad.
because he has been consistent in his criticism of Buhari, but let it be clearly understood that an attack on the Igbo will be regarded as an attack on the South. This is not 1966 and things are very different today. Any attempt to share the blood of any Southerner for any reason as a consequence of any plot or Grand Northern design we have catastrophic consequences. Violence and shedding of innocent blood is not the way forward and the narratives of violence, homicide and murder has no place in our present society. We can agree to disagree on issues and we may not even like one another but we we should rule out threats of murder mass murder ethnic cleansing and genocide in all our discussion and debates and we should renounce and condemn them you do not plan to kill those you disagree with only animals behave like that i urge junat muhammad to withdraw his statement and to join the rest of us in renouncing violence and blood shelled hmm. this is a good ending speech by fanny coyote handling this peacefully should should be encouraged and that shows how civilized we are and not by violence and bloodshed information reaching us on september 1 2019 reviews that the southeast governors denied donating land for ruga following the attack and killings by suspected henchmen the governors of the five states of the southern east in the eastern region part of nigeria on saturday announced a ban on elders moving around with ak-47 rifles and deadly weapons in the region the chairman of the southeast governor forum in the southern eastern region part of nigeria david umahi governor known made known to newsmen at the end of the forum meeting in Enugu state. According to the governor, he said that the governors of the region have sought a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari and security chiefs to talk about the worrying insecurity situation in the zone. Present at the forum were the governors reaching decision where governors of Ebony, Anambra, Imo, and Enugu State, as well as the deputy governor of Abia State, we have banned elders who moved around with AK-47 and machets, and we want the security agencies to enforce the order. We also agree that we have put to measure a play in place to retrain movement of ensmen and their katu from one state to another, which is a source and point of conflict with the natives and farmers, he said. He also go further by saying that the governors has also resolved at the meeting to have a joint air surveillance in the zone with the security agencies to flush out bandits out of the region. Umayi went ahead also to refute the claims by indigenous people of Biafra, Ipo, that the southeast governors in the eastern region part of Nigeria conspired with the Nigerian government to deploy Operation Python Dance in the region in 2007, in which many Ipo members were ad allegedly killed in the region while the operation lasted. IPOP are giving that as an excuse or as a part of the reason his members attacked a former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate, E.K. Ikweremado, in Germany recently. The group had also vowed to attack any Southeast governor that dare to travel abroad. Chief Edwin Kiagbodo Clark has issued 
a strong warning to any group or region pushing against the southeastern producing the next president come 2023. The former Federal Commissioner for Information said it would be dangerous to sideline the Igbo, adding that the amalgamation of South and Northern Nigeria when made was not made that the North or the South should be superior to the other. Clark, the national leader of Pandev, pointed out that after President Muhammad Buhari eight years in 2023, power should shift to the east. We have just finished one election, but we are talking about rotation. It has been there. One of the reasons given against President Jonathan in the past was that he did not obey the rotation order of the presidency. Now, after it has been zoned to the north, after eight years, it will come to the south. And I am surprised at those who are talking, people wanting to become presidents of the Nigeria from certain southern area when the whole of the eastern which is a very vital part of the country no matter what anybody says the southeast is very important part of this country before and after independence you cannot push them aside you just cannot they must be considered in any rotational matter about the presidency for 2023. It's funny somebody just coming out saying that the rotation is abolished, that it does not exist because one competent or intelligent fellow is needed. Are you telling me that the six zones in Nigeria, that there is no zone that cannot produce competent, transparent, intelligent people to run the affairs of the country? Competent leaders abound everywhere among the different zones in Nigeria, so nobody should underrate any areas of this country. The moment you are treating a certain areas of this country as an inferior people, as second class people, as people who are not equal to the others, then there is no peace, there is no country. The amalgamation of Nigeria, South and Northern Nigeria, when it was made, it was not made that one group of people, either the North or the South, should be superior to the other. People existed before Lord Lugard came. There was this Southern Nigerian protectorate. There was Northern Nigerian protectorate. So no one should deceive anybody that is what is going on now in this country is true federalism no today the president is talking about reallocation of revenue he has no power to do that it is the job of the nigerian either at a conference or through the national assembly and the house of assembly the present government is talking about granting autonomy to local government dissolving the joint fund between the state and the local government these are matters of the constitution and only through the restructuring of the country that this can happen i have also heard people like the governor of Sokoto State talking a few days ago about the office of the attorney general that the office of the attorney general should be separated or different from that of the minister of justice. The constitution provides that an attorney general should be independent, which is the attorney general for Everybody, the Minister of Justice can be a politician. We have also heard that the position of the Accountant General of the Federation be split into two, one for the country and one for the federal government. These are all part of the restructuring that we are glamouring for. Hmm. Is a section to some extent is right but the fact is is it what the Igbos want viewers we like to have your comments 
to this. Do Igbos in the eastern region of Nigeria want to be president or they want the uh, 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 is their drive is self-determination? What is your comment on this? Kindly share and let us also see other people's uh, opinion on this matter. Thanks for listening to Fichi Franchi TV. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button for more news updates. Thank you.